Hey, gang, it's me, Dr. Steve, and I got two words for you, Bitcoin and BlackRock. Now, if you were listening to BlackRock CEO Larry Fink a few years back, you would have concluded that these two entities couldn't have possibly been farther apart. They had nothing to do with each other. BlackRock at the time was basically mocking crypto. But yet, as of today, it does appear that crypto has the last laugh. BlackRock is now in the Bitcoin business, as it were. They've been buying up Bitcoin since January. Their Bitcoin ETFs have been on fire, adding hundreds of millions of dollars worth of Bitcoin every single day. According to Coindesk, the massive demand for the new spot ETFs is the key reason for Bitcoin's 60% surge this year alone. It's absolutely astonishing. But this does raise the question, doesn't it? How do everyday normal folks get in on the action? I mean, this is especially relevant for those of us who want to be on the front lines of building a thriving parallel economy, since in many respects, crypto really is the foundation, the financial foundation of that parallel economy. The problem is when it comes to crypto, most of us don't even know where to start. So that is why I brought in our friend and sponsor, Dan Ryder, a cryptocurrency investment expert to help courageous patriots like you and me figure out how we can build generational wealth with the same secrets that companies like BlackRock are privy to. Dan Ryder is the founder of Prime DeFi, an investment education program for courageous patriots like you who want to build wealth and experience financial freedom faster. Dan, welcome. Great to have you here, my friend. Dr. Steve, thank you so much. It's it's a pleasure to be here as well. Well, I, you know, I'm so excited to talk with you uh, today because I, I was sharing with you uh, before the interview here, one of the most common questions I get asked, especially whenever the whole topic of building a parallel economy comes in, is how do I get involved in crypto? I mean, what even is it? You know, kind of, and mostly it's Bitcoin. They'll talk about Bitcoin. So I'm so excited to have you here to perhaps dispel some of the uh, mystery and in do so doing, change some lives in the process. So let me begin in a kind of like primer level here. Let's start off super basic. What is Bitcoin? Yeah, that's it, it's such an interesting question, um, and there's so many ways to answer it. But I think um, at a fundamental level, Bitcoin is trust. Um, it created a precedent for a a a system that you can trust that doesn't rely on a counterparty, right, or an intermediary to do the right thing. Because we as humans, you know, we're we're uh, we're not perfect, and we're we're capable of error. We're capable of misjudgment, mistakes, um, corruption, right? We can be corrupted as people. Um, whereas something that's more autonomous, robotic, uh, uh, cannot, right? If, if it's programmed to do a certain thing. And so, um, Bitcoin in its, in its, at its core, it's a combination of trust and value. Uh, it, it created a, a way that you can have a, um, a systemized way to store value that doesn't, again, rely on somebody to, um, stay honest right so that's you know at, at a at a fundamental level i think that's how i would characterize bitcoin so so it bypasses the uh normal intermediary structures like banks uh governments uh to 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 uh impute value uh to this currency as it were yeah you know instead of relying on one or two or a small set of stakeholders to keep a system honest mm. You've got uh, thousands of validations of a record of, of value, right? And um, the, the way Bitcoin is designed, I mean, we could do a whole class on yeah. that, but uh, it's impossible to cheat the system because if anyone, if one bad actor tried to come in and corrupt the record, it gets invalidated because you've got thousands and thousands of thousands of copies of truth, right? And so um, it, it's an uphill battle, right? And at this point, it's so decentralized. Mm -hmm. Like it's really blockchain technology is what's driving this. Uh, cryptography, these are some of like the, the buzzwords mm -hmm. around the tech. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's at a point now where it's it's so, uh, you know, well well established across the globe and decentralized that you cannot corrupt it, 
it, it cannot be corrupted anymore. It's so interesting. Um, it's so interesting because it, it just it seems to be going back to the way money was, you know, like right. Like when we exchanged gold or we exchanged some kind of real estate, we didn't need a bank in between us. We didn't need some sovereign state in between us. We could we could simply exchange uh, uh, mechanisms of uh, value and and but now we could do that across the world we're not limited to proximity yeah yeah and that, that's another great point that i don't think i touched on a moment ago because bitcoin is finite um although it's a digital asset it is uh, unlike fiat money which could just be printed you know uh at will right. when it's not backed by something tangible like gold yeah. uh, which is unfortunate that that's where we've come you know at least in the us uh you know B bitcoin is not designed that right. way and so it there is finite supply. And so you cannot uh, manipulate its value based on debasing it and just printing more of it. Uh, so you have you have the integrity of of the of the value of the asset and then the trust of the network of, you know, where where is all this uh, where are all these uh, bitcoins distribute? You know, who owns all these bitcoins? Um, uh, the record of who owns what is fair and honest and uh, incorruptible. Right. So you've got value and truth. Right. Right. And that's why I said what I said before. I think it's it's trust and it's value, it's value. in one. It's beautiful. Yeah, it is. It is beautiful. And I think it's a precursor to just Web 3.0, like you're talking about blockchain technology, which is it's just yeah. it's just going to change the game. And it is going to ruin the business model of a lot of mediary institutions like Google and so forth. That George Gilder's book on blockchain is actually entitled Life After Google. It's just going to completely yeah. interrupt it. So <laughs> fascinating. So, what affected uh, BlackRock's uh, recent uh, ETF and involvement in in Bitcoin and the accumulation of Bitcoin? What did that? What effect did that have on just the overall cryptocurrency ecosystem? Yeah, I, I love this question, and um, it's uh, the, their BlackRock's involvement in the cryptocurrency market now is uh, probably um, a pivotal point. In, in the the birth of this industry, uh, since the birth of the, of the crypto market or industry, um, we have an asset, Bitcoin, right, which is the dominant cryptocurrency, um, uh, and uh, you've got a finite supply of something, and you've got now a major stakeholder, BlackRock, the largest asset manager in the world, love them or hate them, right? That, you know that 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 is the truth. They are the lar largest asset manager in the world. They've got ten trillion dollars approximately wow. under management wow. and um we have an asset bitcoin that is limited in supply and and that supply is largely um you know largely out in circulation there's gonna be less and less of it issued over time uh, until there is uh, no more uh, mined by by the bitcoin miners that's a whole other topic but um them coming into the arena is uh leading to a a massive supply shock you know you, you we've seen with this etf product which pretty much gives Wall Street easy access to purchase crypto. Uh, uh, we're seeing BlackRock alone uh, purchasing hundreds of millions of dollars worth of Bitcoin in a 24 hour period, mm -hmm. right? Day after day, they're just gobbling up this Bitcoin. I think at this point they own like two to 3% of the market wow. share. Um, and, and what that's doing when you have supply and demand, right? That are mismatched, uh, you have prices going up, right? So this is actually really exciting uh, for the crypto markets, because uh, th this is this is going to send Bitcoin uh, to the next altitude, right. you know, and and everyone in the market uh, will benefit from that. Uh, is my belief, and not only with Bitcoin, but um, Bitcoin is is kind of one of these things where it's a rising tide lifts all ships. There's a lot of other digital assets, a lot of other cryptocurrencies that are uh, traded uh, against Bitcoin, and so as the value of Bitcoin rises, uh, so do you know so does the entire market uh so it's 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 uh this could be the last cycle where we see this kind of exponential parabolic rise in the cryptocurrency market wow wow so th these other cryptos would be like something like ethereum for example exactly yeah. you've got a ethereum that's probably number two on the list uh uh things like solana and then there's there's a whole slew of altcoins i mean there's oh, I know. there's a lot of altcoins that probably people would never want to touch um <laughs> You know, if you're a more conservative investor, like like uh, perhaps you and I, you know, you want to invest in sound infrastructure. Um, th there's there's a large degree of cryptocurrencies that are very speculative, very high risk. But there's also sound um, technologies like Ethereum yeah. 
Solana, Chainlink. I mean, we could name a few of them that that are, as you alluded to earlier, it's part of the new internet, right. Web three, right? Life after Google. Right. The, these things are are are. Uh, uh, it's about to get really heated and exciting in a good way as far as um, investing in these assets. I, I, that's what I was going to ask. Are there other investors that are, you know, at the proximate level of of BlackRock that are are ready to to join in and all the the hype there? And if there is, I'm assuming that's going to drive Bitcoin's price even higher. Yeah, yeah. You know, this this is a worldwide um, uh, uh, wealth transfer yeah. essentially that's happening because you have. Um, other major funds like Fidelity, right? The largest retirement plan administrator in the United States, uh, all in on, on the crypto industry and Bitcoin uh, specifically, right? Um, you have Van Eck. I mean, there, there's so many other funds. BlackRock's just the biggest one. Uh, but there's probably 20 to $30 trillion worth wow. of uh, capital out there under management by these asset managers wow. that want to get into crypto, that are getting into crypto. They, they've got uh, greenlit. By the SEC with Bitcoin, you know, Ethereum as an ETF product is is next. Uh, we're probably weeks or, or a couple of months or potentially weeks away. Who knows from that happening? And you know, it's just one domino after the other yeah. is falling yeah. in a good way. Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, it's fascinating to have this front row seat of this this new technology developing right before our very eyes. This this financial technology, um, fintech. How 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 is how is the mainstream media, in your in your opinion, portraying uh, investing in crypto? Are they encouraging it? Are are they on board with it? Do they? Uh, what 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 do you uh, yeah. what do you say? <laughs> yeah, that's funny. However, their overlords want them to, right? It's like, uh... <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Well put. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, the, the mainstream media. Oh my gosh, you can, you can get me started yeah, on this one. Yeah. Uh, especially when it comes to crypto, I mean, talk about if there's a, uh, you know, a group that, that has done the most damage to the individual as far as mm. um, uh, manipulating them away from opportunity. I, I would say it would be the mainstream yeah. uh, media. You know, they've they've given it bad press um, when it was perfect times to get entries into the market, mm -hmm. and they've kind of steered people away. Um, uh, uh, when they shouldn't have, right? And and however, you know, I think a lot of these uh, these games are are kind of coming to a conclusion because it, my theory has been that that the media has been helping bigger players like BlackRock, right? Keep keep the game in control, right? Because um, I think what's happening with the mainstream media and with other big players like uh, BlackRock, you know, the asset managers that own the world. You know whether we like it or not, right. it takes them time to um, custody in crypto is is a big deal, right? And a lot of people don't know this. In in 2022, right when markets were crashing, whether it was the regular stock market or the crypto markets, um, it was just a bloodbath that year, mm -hmm. right? We had the war breaking out in Europe, um, and you know crypto did not look good, and that's, cert that's certainly what you heard all over the news. However, what most people don't know, there were there were press releases you had to dig for them, but BlackRock invested four hundred million dollars into Circle, the issuer of USDC, right, a stablecoin collateralized by U.S. dollars. Hmm. Uh, they did that, I believe, in April twenty twenty two, and then in August, I might have these months uh, mm -hmm. mixed up here, but that, there was one major action by BlackRock in April, right? Then in August. You had BlackRock uh, aligning and choosing Coinbase as their custody partner to integrate like their platform, which is called the Aladdin system. That's how they they manage all the all the the money under their management, right? They chose Coinbase to integrate with, you know, uh, from a tech stack point of view to help them custody crypto, right? Because they don't have the infrastructure to do it themselves, right. and so they're making these decisions in 2022. When all hell's breaking loose, right? Mm -hmm. When when all you hear on the news is this is a scam, you know, um, yep. uh, people are mocking Bitcoin. You have notable figures, you know, uh, 
Uh, Warren Buffett, we can say what well, we yeah, can Warren, really <laughs> rough on Bitcoin. Uh, Peter yeah. Schiff, I know, well, I'll yeah, say Pete, it. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah. There you go. You did. You did it for me. Um, <laughs> you're you're kinder yeah, I, I than I am. <laughs> <laughs> I try to stay pragmatic, but sometimes but, and, you, and you in can't, fairness, you I love Peter Schiff when it comes to gold. He he, you know, if it was something yeah. a lot more conservative <laughs> and is a hedge to the volatility of uh, bitcoin yeah. and crypto it's great but yeah i don't know what this either or mentality has sorry i interrupted please yeah. go on no 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 and you know what's funny about him you know he, he recently converted you know he's a believer now. he is he i sees, heard a little he bit so that's true truth. isn't it yeah, yeah. that's neat yeah wow. so so we got him on the crypto train wow um but i guess the point i was making was that you know during during these times and then of course we had things like the ftx exchange oh, God, yeah, yeah uh, just so that's a whole other story yeah. of of uh, shenanigans yep. um but that those were arguably the best times to be getting in the industry right. and you know who was doing it blackrock Black they were exactly. preparing exactly. they were preparing to get into the industry and the mainstream media gave everyone a very biased fear mongering as as is their usual way uh, approach to what this asset class is, mm -hmm. you know, cryptocurrency and, and really not leading people, um, to look at it objectively, mm -hmm. you know, uh, as, as where the puck is going with tech. And so yeah. the, the mainstream media it would not be a wise, um, place for people to go to. Although I, I think a lot of those manipulation games will calm down now because, you know, it, what once once all the big players enter the arena That's like right. everyone's got to get behind it now right but i think we're going to see the narrative change elizabeth warren yeah. talking about crypto funding terror and it's uh yeah, yeah. It, we'll see that stuff fade away because it's going to be a political issue right right and their donors you know? will be <laughs> knee deep in it. yeah yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. If you want us to write a check for you you got to understand where <laughs> this money is coming from exactly yeah uh, let's yeah. let's pivot to everybody out there now, because what I told you, one of the most uh, common questions that I get is, you know, OK, look, I'm you know 50 years old, 60 years old. Uh, I want to get in this crypto thing. I hear about it all the time, especially in relation to a parallel economy. You know, it bypasses government. You know, it, you, you can't um, you can't debank it. It bypasses all the cancel culture that we get so concerned about. We saw that like with the. Um, with the Freedom Convoy in Ottawa, for example, uh, the way they froze bank accounts and all. And so this is, it's like, this is the solution. They're excited about it, but they don't know the yeah. first thing about it. So why, why should courageous patriots out there looking for financial freedom? And I mean, real freedom, freedom from the kind of cancel culture, debanking and so forth, demonetization. And so, why should they get into, make the effort to get into the cryptocurrency market and particularly now yeah this, this is a pivotal time right now um and you know you alluded to to some of what i'm about to say just in the nature of this question uh, and again going going back to blackrock I, I hate to make a whole episode about blackrock but um you know think about why are they doing what they're doing right the world is fundamentally changing the dollar is getting debased every single year yeah. right we're just printing yeah. it out of thin air um value is being lost and those who own the world you know the, the, unfortunately we've got a lot of nefarious organizations and players uh, in this in this world that we live in and they see this they're smart right they're smart and and bitcoin and cryptocurrency and blockchain this is something that can't be stopped mm -hmm. right that's that's the beauty of it and there's a lot of, uh, not a lot of, uh, that is very, uh, uh, very much evident, right? At this point. And so it's all about control, right? It's all about control. And they've been positioning to come in and, and just be the dominant player in the space. And so the thing is they move slowly because they're so big. They move slowly. It's taken them two years just to be two plus years, just to be able to start buying Bitcoin. Right. And so I think now is such a crucial time for the individual to get positioned to start investing in these assets that that um are going to be the future of how value is is measured right the world is getting more and more digital and uh, we want hard assets right you see larry fink talking about this on all his pr tours he's doing to advocate for for why they're getting into the market starting with bitcoin it's just the first of, of many things that they'll try to dominate the market on um but they want to own these hard assets and now as an individual you have the the advantage of how fast you can move mm -hmm. it's going to take blackrock 
a couple of months to say the least to meet their quotas, right? There's, there's, there's that supply shock factor that I talked about where they cannot buy as much as they want in one go because they will literally move the market themselves. Mm -hmm. They'll kind of rip themselves off if that makes yeah. sense in, in a trade. Um, for those of, uh, you know, the people watching have done any trading, they, they might read, read between the lines on what I just said, but even if you don't have any trading background, um, th the big idea here is you can get into the market now, uh, you can get into assets now that we're all going to want to own, right. To, to maintain our wealth and build wealth and protect our families. Um, we're, we're going to want to be in these things. And so you've got two choices. You can come in now. Mm -hmm right? Before the big boys come in and, and take over the market and, and you miss this kind of parabolic rise where you get to benefit, right? If you ever wanted to front run somebody, uh, now's your chance, right? right? You have, right. <laughs> because you can move so much faster right. than these guys. So, so the people who are paying attention now and, and who choose to get involved and invest in the market now, I think will be rewarded for generations compared to those who come in a year from now, two years from now. There's no opportunity like right now, right. and this won't happen again. Right. There's not going to be another round of, you know, giant institutions coming in because once they're in, they're in, right. you know, and then and then things are going to be kind of normal. Right. Um, so right. Right. yeah, and I it's think there's a find huge it's sense stability, of it's equilibrium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. So what advice then would you give? Just very practical advice. Would you give our audience looking to navigate this the, this evolving landscape of crypto investments as beginners, particularly? Yeah, um, I think twofold. Uh, one, I, I kind of just mentioned it: get in the market, like get in the market. Um, uh, understand what these assets are, and you know we we've built a community where we help people do that because there's there's um, it could it could seem like this this is not a um, a sector for you, especially if, if you're more mature, you've got some life experience, you've been on this planet, you know, longer than, than the 20 year olds out there. What I would challenge people, um, who are older to, to realize is that cryptocurrency as an asset class, it is not just for the, the, the 20 something year olds, That's right. um, that are technologically savvy. No, this is for anyone right. and anyone can understand it. And that's why we've got a community of, of over a thousand people now awesome. in, in our world of, of more experienced people. And actually I think the market needs that. So number one, I would say, don't be intimidated and get in the market because it's, it's not as complex as you think right. it truly isn't. Right. Um, number two is learn how to take self custody, right? When you go buy cryptocurrency, if you go, uh, create an account on Coinbase or Robinhood. There's some major exchanges or Kraken, uh, Kraken.com. These are all exchanges that you can go buy cryptocurrency on um, in the as a US resident. There are others globally, but if you're a USA based resident, your menu is a little limited as far as what exchanges you can work with. However, that being said, you know, once you buy your crypto, um, you want to take it under your position. You want to be your own custodian because part of the ethos of, of this stuff is is personal sovereignty right personal control over your assets and crypto allows you the opportunity to do that and to custody uh your crypto whether it's ethereum or bitcoin or whatever it is you can take charge of it yourself and that way you're um you know you're not at the mercy of uh an exchange being you know out of service or god forbid something like ftx ever happened right, again right. right the people who lost their funds um that could have been easily avoided yeah easily avoided right so uh is to learn how to do self-custody would be my second charge and that's also not as complex as people think and we teach people how to do that in our community and i was just thinking to talk about somebody who was propped up by the mainstream media sam bankman freed i mean my, if anything he was created by them you know it's just interesting that kind of <laughs> yeah. strange to talk about solidifying your your whole concern uh, now, yeah. uh, Dan, you have a program and that you just alluded to it uh, there, a community, a program uh, where you've uh, you really have kind of done this for people. So you, you could you could grab my hand and walk me through precisely what you just said. You have it's called Prime DeFi program. Give us just a, a nice little overview of of what it looks like when Turley Talkers join your Prime DeFi program. Sure. Yeah. And, you know, it's so interesting. When, when I started this, um, I, I didn't know where, where it was going to go. Uh, I, I was just an individual investor myself. Uh, my business was doing well. I wanted to invest in crypto markets. I found DeFi, right? DeFi is 
is short for decentralized finance. It's this kind of subsector of, of crypto that almost nobody knows about um, with some cool opportunities behind it. But I, so I get into this world and I'm, I'm living in a community where there's, there's other, I'd say, savvy people uh, around me um, that are also crypto investors and, and they're not really too familiar with DeFi. I start, I start showing them the opportunity and um, they're intrigued by it. And then, and then I realize, wow, you know, most, most people who are in the crypto market don't even know about this, right? So I realized, you know, we could, we could teach this, right? So I start showing it to some people. Lo and behold, you know, two years later, we've got a community and, and a brand. And, and what's, what's interesting is I thought who would be attracted to this would be kind of like the young and hip crowd, right? But the, the average age of someone in our community is, I think, about 50 years really? old. Really? Right? Cool. And, yeah. and I think why, part of why that is, is, is our approach to crypto investing mm -hmm. is very conservative. Mm -hmm. It's, it's uh, less, you know, th there's a lot of degeneracy out there in crypto land. People hear these crazy stories of, you know, people essentially gambling on, on meme coins, if you ever heard that, right. that term. Right. Right. And that's like the last thing I wanted to do right. with my hard earned money and from my business. Right. So, um, so so people just uh we started attracting people who aligned with that investment uh thesis right and and so we were attracting a more experienced more mature level-headed values driven person to come in here and um we developed a framework where we can help anyone and you know uh to our community right out of the gate we're teaching you the the 101 of of what crypto is how to buy it right how to custody it like i said and then from there we kind of open the door and we show you how, you know, there's this business model that I'll just kind of hint at now. If you think about Coinbase and Robinhood, um, these are big exchanges where uh, people go to trade, right? They, they're, to, to operate as an exchange, you need a billion dollars at least and a bank charter and all this stuff. That's not a business model that's accessible to you and I, right? If, unless you're a billionaire and you have a bank charter. That's my, uh, that's the shtick I always go back to. But what's cool about DeFi is that there are these open markets that are self custody based where right. you can actually utilize your crypto almost like like a real estate investor would use property if you're going to invest mm -hmm. in this stuff you can utilize it and earn yield on it right and we teach people how to do that in defi and it's a much more conservative approach to crypto investing so we show you that next so first we want to teach you how to how to get into the market safely um wisely right how to custody your stuff and then how to how to make it productive Right. So, so you yeah. can put it to work, generate cash flow off these assets. So that's kind of the journey that we put people through. Uh, we've got a whole community of people, uh, you know, all kind of focused on this together. It's, it's really, really cool. It is. It's so, and so exciting. Dan, I'm just so, I was so excited to chat with you, you know, as we we're leading up to this interview, because I knew this would be benefiting so many people in our audience. Gang, if you want to gain the the knowledge and tools you need to thrive in the in the crypto crypto market, don't try to do it yourself. Find a mentor, <laughs> right? It's it's always who, not how. Don't try to figure it out yourself and make all your mistakes. Go and hang out with someone who already made all the mistakes for you, and then it's going to give you all of his wisdom. That's exactly what Dan is for us. Um, gang, click on the link below. Let Dan's team at Prime DeFi, just think of that term, decentralized finance, right? Forget all of this debanking, DeFi, Prime DeFi. Get, uh, let them give you the education you need to be investing in crypto like the pros, like BlackRock. Let's get a courageous patriots like you just flourishing in the world of finances so we can grow the parallel economy and leave a lasting legacy that we can all be proud of. Click on that link below right now and get in touch with Dan and his community today. You will not regret it. Dan Ryder, thank you, sir. Fascinating stuff. Please come back again soon. Yes, sir. We'll do. This was a pleasure. Had a lot of fun. Thank you, Dan.